It's another day and we've got more watches for you. Welcome to our Watches and Wonders coverage day two, where we'll be covering the likes of Art Lung and Zuna, Cartier, Oris and more. If you're looking to buy, sell or exchange a luxury watch, visit WatchFinder. The first stop of the day is to Arlunga and Zuna. This year, the brand is celebrating 25 years of the Datagraph, and it's hard to miss its first new release, because look at the size of that thing. This is the new Datagraph Perpetual Tourbillon. Not only does the Honey Gold watch boast three grand complications, a flyback chronograph, an instantaneous switching perpetual calendar with a big date, and a one minute tourbillon, but it's also a Lumen edition. Art Lunger and Zuna Lumen watches have a ton of lume and a semi-transparent dial, which allows you to see the inner workings of the watch below. The second and last release from Art Lunger and Zuna this year is the new white gold datagraph up down in 41 millimeters. The up down is a little more reserved than the perpetual tourbillon, but while it loses the perpetual calendar, tourbillon and a large amount of lume, the up down still has a big date, flyback chronograph and a rich blue dial that the camera doesn't do nearly enough justice. Next, it's to the wonderful world of GG Lecoult to discover three new Duomet watches. For those that aren't familiar with the Duomet, this incredible watch has two barrels and two separate gear trains within one watch, with both trains linked to a single regulating organ. But why go to all that trouble? Well, one gear train is used for the time and the other for any complications the watch may have. The separation means that the activation and use of a complication have no way of affecting the timing of the watch, ultimately making it more reliable. The three new Duomets are the Chronograph Moon, available in either pink, gold or platinum, the stainless steel Quantem Lunaire and the incredible Helio Torbion Perpetual Calendar. You might have noticed that we've used some footage from our own setup, hands-on review of the Chronograph Moon to follow soon. Now we take a quick stop at Cartier to discover some of its new pieces and these immediately caught my eye. A Santos de Cartier with a dual time subdial and date, the new Tortue and Tortue Monopoussois, two new Tank American watches, one in yellow gold and one in platinum, the Rotund de Cartier Skeleton Mysterious double tourbillon, the Rotund de Cartier Mass Mysterious and finally a version of the Rotund de Cartier Mass Mysterious with diamonds for days cuz. Arriving at IWC, we're greeted by a big old moon and lots of Portuguese watches. The big release for IWC this year is the Portuguese Eternal Calendar. Now, while a regular perpetual calendar will consider the leap years and differing days of each month, in the year 2100, you'll need to adjust it as it won't account for exceptions in the Gregorian calendar. Feeling me? But the new Eternal Perpetual Calendar won't need adjusting in 2100, as it accounts for those exceptions, meaning the watch is accurate until the year 3499. That's the furthest year the Gregorian calendar has been calculated to. In addition to the Eternal Calendar, IWC has introduced several new colour dials across several different models to express the atmospheric moods of the day. For time's sake, we'll explore these colours using the Perpetual Calendar 44. First, there's Horizon Blue for the early afternoon clear sky. Second is Dune for the early evening sunlight. And then is Obsidian for the deep black night sky with the golden lights of the city. And finally, the Silver Moon, which is a little more self-explanatory. Next, we found ourselves at Oris, and this year the brand has concentrated on its popular Aquis model. Now, Oris has released quite a few new versions of the Aquis Date in various sizes, colours and with different movements, but we'll take a look at the 43.5mm Calibre 400. For those that aren't familiar with the Calibre 400, this Oris in-house movement offers high resistance to magnetism, a 120 hour power reserve and only needs to be serviced every 10 years. Along with its new movement, the watch has also been reworked, making it more wearable despite its 43.5mm sizing, and it features a quick strap change system, allowing you to move between the bracelet and rubber strap with ease, and it can be had in black, blue, green, or for a little bit more money, with an upcycled dial. Oh, and there was also this 40mm Divers 65 Chronograph 2, a simple, clean, bi-compact style chronograph fitted with the Calibre 771. 
And now our Watches and Wonders footage wouldn't be complete without visiting Van Cleef and Arpels, and I think I'll just shut up and let the pieces speak for themselves. So that about wraps our coverage for Watches and Wonders this year. Which watches released at this year's event were your favourite? Let me know and thank you for watching and coming along with us. And if you'd like to support the channel, please visit Watchfinder at the link in our description and I'll catch you next time. All right then, bye.